Let me tell you a story. In 1959 was a momentous year. Alaska and Hawaii become states that year. COBOL is launched. Barbie makes her debut. And for our story, Henry Kramer, an industrialist in Britain, puts up a 5,000 pound prize to anyone who can solve the problem of human powered flight. Uh, and this was a pretty big sum because the average house cost less than half of that. This was 1959. Now, human powered flight, it's been a dream for centuries, millennia, right? Many people tried to solve the problem. Many people failed. And the problem hung out there. It hung out there for 17 years with many people trying and failing and lots of expensive attempts, crashes. And people kind of just thought, well, this is a really difficult problem. You know, humans have been trying to do this for hundreds of years. It must be really difficult. That's why we're not solving it. Fast forward 17 years later, Jobs and Wozniak released the Apple One. My sister Cara is born. She'll never watch this talk. Um, and the Kramer Prize is now offering 50,000 pounds, which is over a quarter of a million dollars in today's money. And a British aeronautics engineer, engineer called Paul McCready finds himself in debt and uh, motivated to solve this. One year later, his plane claimed the prize by flying a figure eight around markers half a mile apart, staying, as you can see, about 10 feet off the ground. He claimed the prize in one year when lots of teams had failed to do it for 17 years. Barely another year later, he claimed the second prize, flying across the English Channel. The question is, how did this happen? Well, he understood the problem in a way that other people did not. Most teams were making a big project, you know, every six months they'd get to make a test, and they'd crash, and they'd go back to the drawing board. Paul built his planes with mylar foil, bailing wire, aluminum tubes. He made three or four tests a day sometimes. And so he solved in a year or so what everyone else had failed to solve. So what can we learn from this? Well, the technical problem is not always the problem. The real problem is the process of solving the problem. If you're trying to build something that has to be right first time, is very hard to change, is your sort of magnum opus, then you're pretty much doomed to failure like all those teams that tried to solve human power flight. And if by slim chance you do succeed, you're pretty much still doomed to obsolescence, right? If you're trying to build something that's a magnum opus. This is something I occasionally hear people on the C++ committee say, and I'm kind of sad each time I hear it, because projects that don't account for change either fail or they're obsolete on arrival. So let's try and solve the right problem. Now, of course, partly this is a societal problem because we usually hear about the genius, the flash of inspiration, the thing that happened in a lightning strike and someone solved the problem and that was solved. And we never hear about the years of toil before success comes around. You know, you haven't heard of WD-39 or WD-38 or anything before that. You've only heard of WD-40. And yet, it was the 40th attempt at a water displacement uh, compound. So, actually, I want to ask you a question. Who invented the light bulb? Because this is the supreme irony. The light bulb is the thing we use to represent the flash of inspiration. So, who invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison, no. And I know someone else is about to yell out Joseph Swan, and you're wrong, you're still wrong. The answer is nobody and everybody. It took a hundred years for people to refine the light bulb from the first time it was thought of in about 1801 until about 1910. And that's the real process.